Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Age Better, where each week we take a deep dive into all the ways we can feel better, look better, live better, and yep, age better. I'm your host, Barbara Hanna Grufferman. Alzheimer's disease leaves a profound mark on countless lives, and it definitely affects more women than men, for sure. And what's emerging in the fight against this challenging disease is the therapeutic role of art. Whether it's creating or appreciating art, it's showing great promise in easing symptoms like anxiety and depression, which are so common in dementia. More than just improving mood or potentially aiding memory, art offers a way for those with Alzheimer's to express themselves and find a sense of normalcy. Today, my guest is Natalie Cormos. She's a young poet behind the beautiful book, Fibers of a Memory, which is a window into the world of Alzheimer's through a blending of poetry and art. Her lyrical poetry is interlaced with the art of a woman who lived with Alzheimer's, and together they weave a narrative beyond just words and images. In this conversation, I talk with Natalie about how her work aligns with the latest research on art therapy, which is a powerful tool to enhance focus, self-esteem, and social interaction in patients with dementia. Even museums and other institutions have started to recognize this and are creating programs that benefit both those with dementia and their caregivers. This new approach to Alzheimer's care is groundbreaking. Artistic expression particularly in the early and moderate stages of Alzheimer's, leverages the still present abilities in art making and art appreciation. Artists like Willem de Koenig, who painted even after his Alzheimer's diagnosis, demonstrate how the disease can transform artistic expression. Art becomes a vital nonverbal channel for expressing the rich emotional lives of those living with Alzheimer's. But Fibers of a Memory, this beautiful book, is more than just Natalie's book. It's a movement. It's about therapy, hope, and rethinking support for those with Alzheimer's and their caregivers, using art not just as therapy, but as a means of connecting. Having watched my own grandmother battle Alzheimer's until she finally passed away, from this dreadful disease. This topic is deeply personal to me. And towards the end of her life, my mother was showing signs of dementia. I remember that one of the activities we would do together that brought her a great deal of joy was singing, which is another form of artistic expression. It always calmed her down and made her smile, made me smile too. And fortunately for me, I taped quite a few of those moments and they continue to make me smile. So grab your earbuds and tune in for a lovely, lovely chat with a lovely young woman who is doing what she can to help others. Stay tuned. This episode is brought to you by Bumble. So you want to find someone you're compatible with, specifically someone who's ready for a serious connection, totally open to having kids in the future, is a tall rock climbing Libra, and loves rom-coms with vegan pizzas on Tuesdays just as much as you do. Bumble knows that you know exactly what's right for you. So whatever it is you're looking for, Bumble's features can help you find it. Date now on Bumble. This episode is brought to you by FX's The Veil, starring Elizabeth Moss. FX's The Veil is an international spy thriller that follows two women as they play a deadly game of truth and lies on the road from Istanbul to Paris and London. One woman has a secret, and the other has a mission to reveal it before thousands of lives are lost. FX's The Veil premieres April 30th, only on Hulu. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Age Better. I'm your host, Barbara Hannah Grufferman, and joining me today is a delightful person. I'm so happy to have her on the show, Natalie Cormos, who is a young poet. She's been writing poetry for many years, and she's written a wonderful book. For those of you watching, I'm holding it up, Fibers of a Memory, 
And she wrote this book with a patient who has Alzheimer's. So this is a really special, special book written by a very special young woman. So welcome, Natalie. Hello, Barbara. Thank you very much for having me. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Natalie. Well, I come to you currently from rainy Scotland, but I'm from Canada. I grew up on a ginseng farm in Port Dover, Ontario, and I started writing from quite a young age. Now, I hold two degrees from the University of St. Andrews, a Bachelor's of Science in Biology, and I recently graduated from a Master's in Business. So I'm looking um, on the job hunt for a job in London, but I'm open to all sorts of opportunities. Now, when I was at St. Andrews during my university career, I became enthusiastically immersed in the town and the university communities. I competed nationally on the polo team. I won numerous national championships. I competed on the ballroom and Latin dancing team, and I continued golf and sailing. I also continued my competitive singing, which I began at about the age of three. Now, I sing classical Italian opera, great American songbook, but most interestingly, I've always sung a lot of Scottish folk songs. And so it's really wonderful that I've ended up studying and living in Scotland. Oh, that's wonderful. Natalie, what can I say? (laughs) You are really (laughs) quite the accomplished young woman and beautiful too. And the fact that you took time out of your very busy life to write this very special book, Fiber of a Memory, right here again, I'm holding it up for those of you who are watching, and there will be a link to get more information about Natalie and this wonderful book in the show notes, everyone. So please do check that out. So what inspired you to write this particular book? And we know that you've been writing poetry for a long time, but why this book? Well, I wrote this book actually when I was doing my master's dissertation. I put that together. And first and foremost, to help people. Coming from my background and experience with singing and music, there's a very pertinent versatility to the rhyming nature of my book, as there's fascinating research with music and Alzheimer's, and particularly in the area of Alzheimer's therapy. Now, a lot of my writing comes from a scientific perspective, and this has been greatly influenced by Professor Vincent Yonick, a former director of the Scottish Oceans Institute at the University of St. Andrews. And he is my absolute favorite professor. He's a brilliant scientist and an incredible individual. And he has always very poignantly spurred on and encouraged my great passion for scientific learning and always encouraged me to ask questions when I'm delving into new information. And so the scientific base specifically for this book comes from the research and teaching of Professor Frank Gunmore, also at the University of St. Andrews. And Professor Gunmore has conducted a great amount of fascinating and successful research in the area of Alzheimer's. And he describes two of the hallmarks in postmortem brains of Alzheimer's patients, being the amyloid beta plaques and neurofibrillary tau tangles. Now, while one or the other of these occurrences can be found in numerous different animals, uh, very few present both. Now, one of these animals are dolphins. And so he has discovered in dissections of brains of dolphins that have been deceased in strandings, both the plaques and the tangles. So while it's not yet known for certain whether dolphins are experiencing dementia symptoms in a similar manner as humans, it's a potential explanation for mass pod strandings where an affected individual is perhaps becoming confused and ends up in shallow water. Another consideration is that Alzheimer's disease is occurring in animals with a long post-fertility lifespan, so Mm -hmm. humans and dolphins. So it was in Professor Gunmore's neurobiology lectures, and we were deep into taking notes, and he was describing neural connections and the synapse. And it was at that moment that he had said, and that is a memory. And that overwhelmingly stuck with me and was such a great inspiration for this book. Most notably, 
in the title, Fibers of a Memory, fibers relating to the dendritic structures of neurons. That's just an incredible background story. Natalie, thank you for sharing that with us. That sounds like an incredible, uh, two incredible professors at the University of St. Andrews. Wow, they really did teach you a lot. And certainly they taught you probably one of the most important life lessons you'll ever get to ask the important questions, right? Yes, absolutely. You did combine your lyrical poetry with the artwork of a patient who is experiencing Alzheimer's. So how did you connect with that particular person? And tell us a little bit about her, Susan Parrish. Yes, yes, wonderful Susan. So I reached out to all the branches of the Alzheimer's Society of Canada and seeing if there was interest in a collaboration with artwork. And so I was uh, contacted by Lorraine McCallum in Peterborough, and she connected me with Brian Parrish, who actually lives, I think, two hours from me in Canada. Mm -hmm. And so Brian's wonderful wife, Susan, who lived with Alzheimer's, she created hundreds of beautiful pieces of artwork as part of her art therapy. And the more I learned about Susan, the more I wanted to meet her which was a really difficult part of the collaboration as Susan sadly passed away in 2018. Mm -hmm. And so she was such a trailblazing beacon for her own community and so many others in creating Alzheimer's friendly communities. So she worked to create awareness of which individuals were living with Alzheimer's and how others with patience and understanding how they could help with day-to-day -day life. And so um, Susan, she was fervently adamant on that people were living with Alzheimer's. And so she didn't allow Alzheimer's to identify herself as someone handicapped by or suffering from Alzheimer's. So it really is wonderful. And I keep that whenever I'm talking about her story or with others, that they're living with Alzheimer's. And so there's a, a lot of intentional features about my book. But something interesting is that the cover image, I picked it and I was really drawn to it out of all the images that Brian sent to me. And he later told me that that is one of his family's favorite pieces of artwork. And they have it framed in large scale in their home. So that's really just very lovely. I'm holding it up again for everyone to see. It is absolutely beautiful. I mean, speaking of dolphins, your dolphin story, of course, the colors reminds me of the ocean. Yes. Yeah, it's beautiful. I really love that too, about what sitting with someone and they, they look through the book and seeing what they can see in the images. But intentional features about my book, there's currently only a physical format. And that was very important to me as I wanted something tangible that was easy for people just to sit down and open up to share. And my book is has a classification of large print, so it's easy for all ages to read. And mm -hmm. the artwork was such a focal point of the project. And so I made sure that when it was printed, it had enhanced coloring for the images. And now there is one image that it is purposely repeated twice in the book. And so it almost appears as a misty spattering. And it's mm -hmm. as if memories, they're coming into emergence. And it also reminds me of neurons. But it was intentionally repeated to mimic the nature and patterns of our memories and the strengthening of neural connections. Oh, that's really wonderful. Thank you for pointing that out. And... How did you actually write your poetry? Did you look at and reflect on and contemplate the artwork and then wrote your poetry? Or had you written your poetry already and then you just kind of matched up the placement of the artwork with what you had written? What was your artistic process here? Well, I didn't have the images until many years later. I've actually, I wrote this poem maybe about eight years ago. And so it was, it was finding and kind of discovering what I was going to do with it. But it was a little bit in development. I mean, sometimes you have a piece of writing and then come back to it. Brian sent me all these images. And so just looking through them, really just what felt like it connected to specific parts of my writing. Yes. 
How do you hope this book and your words and this artwork together will help to raise the discussion around dementia and Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia? What do you hope to achieve with this book? So the thing about my book is that it's really a book for everyone. It's not a children's book. It's not just for adults. Fibers of a Memory is a book for everyone. And that's a difficult part, too, of really sharing it because it's not fitting into sort of a predetermined category. So that's been a challenge of getting it out there so that people know it's available so that it can help. And the feedback I've received, it's really been wonderful. People have said that it's a comfort, that it's consoling. And that is exactly what I hope for it to be. I hope that someone, a grandchild, can sit down with it and share it with a grandparent. And that people find comfort and solace, but not only people living with Alzheimer's, but for uh, the many others affected, so caregivers and loved ones. And I exactly, I hope it opens up conversations where maybe someone was isolated physically or emotionally. They can look at this book and share challenges, emotions, and understanding of the, the neurobiology of Alzheimer's as well. Mm -hmm. And it also, I think, could encourage people to take on projects like this, you know, maybe within families, having yes. young people in the families write some words, either poetry or essays or just whatever they're thinking. And maybe someone who is experiencing some degree of Alzheimer's or other form of dementia could create some artistic works to go with it. I mean, I I think this project was just so wonderful, and I hope that more people get together and collaborate in this way to create some other books and projects like this. Just beautiful. Thank you. You know, I'm just flipping through right now and look at some of this. Quite a few of the images, to me, really represent nature. I see a lot of nature in yes. Susan's artwork. Thank you so much for sharing this and for sharing your story, Natalie. You really you. are an incredible woman. And Thank you. I know that you'll have an incredible career, whatever you choose to do ahead you. of you. And you could go in so many different directions. Probably that's your biggest challenge of the moment. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. And with writing in particular, I have so many more projects that are similar to this one that I really I look forward to publishing and sharing so that they can help others. Mm hmm. Thank you so much. And there will be links, as I said, in the show notes for everyone to check out the book and hopefully buy a copy so that we can really, really, really push the conversation around dementia and Alzheimer's specifically much, much more and more quickly as well. Thank you, Natalie, for joining me. Thank you, Barbara. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. If you enjoyed this episode of Age Better Podcast, please do a few things. First, share it with all your friends and family. Then subscribe to Age Better wherever you listen to podcasts, including YouTube, so you never miss a single episode. Finally, if you have ideas for topics you want me to cover in a future episode of Age Better, send an email to agebetterpodcast at gmail.com or reach out to me on social media. Until next time, remember this. We can't control getting older, but we can control how we do it. Talk to you soon. Age Better Podcast is a proud member of the Sound Advice Network. Sound Advice, women's voices amplified.